this is your first agricultural TV station in the country, the Agricultural Research Council of Nigerian Television. My name is Joshua Ishal, welcoming you to yet another interesting episode of the program Aqua Farming. For those of you who are tuning in for the very first time, you're actually right on time. Nigeria is actually moving towards trying to sustain itself in terms of agriculture. And thereabout, agriculture has always been the bedrock of every thriving economy. And Nigeria is not an exception. And it's more reason a program like this is designed and actually tailored towards telling you all you need to know about how you can go back to farming comfortably and sustainably, not minding the weather. And it's more reason why it has to do with aquaculture. Aquaculture is the practice of raising in ponds, better still, in the wild. And today on the program, we'll be looking at fish farming. Of course, we know consists of nursery and grow out ponds operation. Nursery involves the inducement of the female eggs, which are then fertilized, incubated, and hatched. The hatched fish are known as fry. These fries are then nurtured between three and four weeks into fingerlings, mini juveniles, and juveniles, which is a size suitable for use in the fish grow out operation. Today on the program, we'll be talking to a professional fish telling us processes of hatching and raising fish for smoking. Take a look. Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria ASCN coordinates the activities of research institutes and is responsible for supervision, regulation, coordination of research activities and programs of higher institutions in Nigeria. I'm Professor Hamid Sharabatusin's assumption as Executive Secretary of ASCN in April 2020 has solidified the transformation of agriculture in Nigeria through strategic and meaningful execution of research fundings for improvement of the agricultural sector. Uh, students and the other uh, Youths and women within the community, and this, we, in the aspect of training, we have two aspects of the fisheries: fisheries and aquaculture. The fisheries aspect is the way to catch a fish, like a processing aspect, the catching aspect, and then when we come to the aquaculture aspect, is the breeding and then the production unit. Uh, you know, in every aspect of uh, agriculture uh, sector, you need to have a seat. So the college here, our mandate is to train how to produce a fish seed, that is the fingerlings. And also, not only uh, the fish, fingerling production also, we also aid in producing manpower from different aspects of the community, different communities. Fisheries School Baga is a very long uh, standard, it's established in 1978, of which for me, let me this use of opportunity to say that I have also uh, part and parcel of this college because I graduated from this college and that college could college is more or less of entrepreneurship of the college where when a, a student leaves the college at least can stand by itself now as we are talking about the federal college the federal government is now talking about fish, food, uh, fish security uh, food security so once if you come out from this college graduate you can able to at least maintain our training and then also stand by yourself safe employment
ARCN Promoting Agriculture Personally, I love uh, farming. My dad, uh, when we were growing up in Castina, was a farmer. There is a lot in agriculture. So as um, a mother, I decided to, after school, I decided to uh, go into one of the uh, farming production. So I picked fish farming because I, I want to, you know, look at how they grow from the hatchery to the uh, time they, they get to one kilo or their bookstore stage. So it's like an adventure uh, for me. I want to really know how it goes before I went into that fish farm. So I love that. That was why I went into it. Okay, now uh, I rightly said it's actually an adventure. Can you just take us one to, uh, we could see that you just uh, hatched some couple of fish. Yeah. Here. Can you just maybe take us around the to, to the point where now start like properly making money because someone watching right now wants to go into this very business yeah. and say this very content is going to give him that and of course like of course it's a resort for me too. Yeah. so can you please take us okay um it starts from the bootstock uh the female there's a female there's a male what happens here the female has eggs stocked in inside of her so at the end of the day she's been injected to get the eggs because as you know fish they don't deliver on their own it's through their eggs so we extract their eggs then inject the spermatozoa of the man to the eggs within the three days then you you start seeing those fingerlings shooting out from the egg. So that is just it. It's, it's, it's something that once you're there doing it, you want to really, you have love doing it because it's an adventure. You, you can imagine how you just pick an egg, put it in the water, within the read of three days, you see a millions of fish, million, not thousands. We're talking about a female booster can give you up to 100,000 of fish, just a female, one female. So it is uh, a good one. Whoever that wants to go into fish farming should rush up. It is a good one. It's lucrative. It's a good business. Uh, not minding the ups and downs, but it's a good one. I would advise every, anyone who has love for agriculture to also include fishing. Okay. Yes. So now, after, after you must have hatched them, what now happens? Okay, we read them for eight weeks. Within that eight weeks, they become, uh, eight weeks. yes. No, we, you have to read them for eight weeks. Within that eight weeks, they become juvenile. Why we are rearing them up to eight weeks uh, is for you to know the status of the fish. Because, you know, in everything, you have ups and downs. Uh, so within that eight weeks, you have to treat them, rear them, culture them, nurture them like a newborn baby. So that eight weeks, it can be sent into the market. It will be ready for other farmers to buy from you at the rate of 60 naira per one within that uh, eight weeks. So you have to keep it for eight weeks if you really want to do this business. Yes. Okay. After the eight weeks, you bring them out from the fingerling section, which is your hatchery room. You either expose them to an eating pond or a concrete pond. That is where you start nurturing them from 2 mm feed to 3 mm to 4 mm to 6 to 9 mm. So based on the size you want to train, because we have different sizes people train. Like me, I do the both size. I do the melange and the one kilo size. The melange is the smoking size, which you have 400 to 500 grams. Why the, um, the one kg is the one they use for barbecue, the bigger size. So it takes you the range of four to six months to actually do this successfully. Successfully. So that is it. Okay, now let's talk about um, the major thing that a farmer should put into cognizance when you want to go into fish farming. What is the most do? And then what is that particular thing that if you get it right, the rest are sure that you are good to go. Because I believe there are some of the routines that can be compromised, yeah. while some cannot be compromised. So in your opinion, which one you cannot miss? Is it that you need to have very good, uh, was it the juveniles, mm. or better still, good water, is it the feeding? What particular aspect is so paramount? First things first, your seedling, which is your juvenile. 
your juvenile is, is supposed to be 100% okay. Because uh, from the onset, we have rots. We have rot. Those rots are the one that affects people's farm. Rot. Rot is uh, when you get to a farm and those fish, they are sick. They are after six weeks, but you don't know they are sick. So when you get it from other farmers and bring them into your farm, before you know, they start dying. So they, we call them rots. Okay. So the first thing first you should consider is good seed, which is your fingerlings. The second thing you should consider is your water. Your water is very, very necessary. If you have a good water, you're good to go for your feed. The moment you bring them in and they are able to adapt in your water, you're good to go. Another thing again is your environment. Anywhere we're rearing uh, fish farming, is supposed to be neat. This is things that we take into our body. So we're also supposed to keep them where it is very, very uh, clean. So you look at your pond, the location, where it is, how neat it is. If it is not good, you have to repair. You have to go into repair, repair them. If you're going into eating pond, we have the eating pond. The eating pond, which is the one that is not concrete. And you also have to look at the soil, the soil texture of the place. Then if it's good you can introduce your juvenile in there. So that is just it. Okay. Now, uh, you talked about some of the challenges basically that is uh, uh, around fish. What is right now, as so you speak, of course, we know uh, the fees are quite expensive, everything is now on the high. What is now the major challenge, aside the expense uh, uh, that, that things been expensive, what is yet another challenge that is in fish? I don't think there's a challenge in fish production. The only challenge we have is the cost of feeding. Once we have a stable cost of feeding, we don't have challenge in fish production. So that is just it. Because the truth is, you already have good water. You have good seedling. The next thing is your feeding. So that is it. Based on the high rate of the feeding now, that is where the challenge comes in. And we farmers are not able to meet up. Now we get some of this feed. At the, as of last two years, we are getting them for 8,000. But as of today, it's about 18,000 plus. So when you look at it, a fish is supposed to consume like 5 kilo of that feed. When you divide it, you see that you're, you're selling at lost based on the market. The, the market people are looking at it now. Uh, we can't buy this fish at the rate of 2,000 too because uh, we are not buying it like that. But they don't consider the high cost of feeding. So right now, the problem the fish farm farmers are having, we fish farmers, is the cost of feeding. Mm -hmm. That is just it. Yeah, it seems to be more likely uh, like to be the smoke than the barbecue. Why? What is that new version behind that? Yes, the smoke, as you can see, the smoke goes, it sells faster. It's not everyone that takes barbecue. Uh, but when, as uh, you can prepare uh, uh, anything with your smoked fish, you can do any dinner you want with smoke. It sells faster in the markets than the barbecue. So that melon size, which is 400 to 500 kg, is like fire. It's lucrative. Like how many weeks will it take to raise that? It's four months. Okay, four months. Within the range of four months, you have 400 to 500 gram. So it sells faster. A customer can buy up to 10 tons from you just one customer to resell to smokers because some people comes to buy from us then go ahead to resell for the smoke to the smokers to so a customer can buy up to 10,000 tons just a, a customer on that melange but when you have the one kg which is the barbecue is slow it's very very slow because the intake is slow so that is just it can you recall any moments where you actually had a very good sale of your fish? Of course, I'm sure yeah. they are not the same. Mm -hmm. And what happened? Was it that you did it right or you got the good boost? Or what, was the, what, what actually brought that very big achievement according to you? The rate of the feed. Okay. The rates at which I got the feed. It was the rate at which we got the feed was on wholesale. And so the price was uh, minimized for us. At the end of the day, we made a lot of profits. So that, that was it, sometimes in April last year. So we made a lot of profit because we got the feed at a subsidized price. And at the end of the day, our fish also gave us what we wanted because fish is feed. Whatever you give your fish is what it gives to you. That is just fish for you. So that is it. Is there any other means of feeding them aside from going to the normal? Because I believe some end up saying, okay, they feed them maggots and all these things and stuff. We don't do that because we don't, we don't do that. I personally in this farm, we don't do that. Because I, I see it as a time wasting. 
to be honest. I see it as time wasting and uh, instead of you trying to uh, embark on something that is going to take your time, why not look at this feed that will also give you the same results. So we don't do that here. We have not tried that. Okay. Uh, now, do you, do, you, um, do you train people on fish farming and then basically how has it been like? Is it that they come across the farm the better still you grow? No, for the past two years we have not been training people from the outside. Rather, we we have workers who stay with us. Uh, the range of maybe six months, learn from us, and uh, we don't allow in and out because of the security of the place. So what we do, we employ you as a worker. You work for us for six months. In the duration of six months, you're learning. Also, at the end of six months, the contract goes on. Then we pick another person. So those are the procedures we use in training people here. Okay. Some people have actually seen fish farming people who have retired, you know, the youth we said, okay, it's something I'll just fall back to after working for the civil service and all that. And some people have seen, okay, there is no, it is no as the creative arts, maybe some other businesses. Now, say you spend like a uh, hundred thousand in raising fish, in your own estimation roughly, like how much are you doing after spending? Twenty percent. Okay, twenty percent. Twenty percent. Yes, twenty percent. Comfortably twenty percent after your expense. 20%. So it's not, it's not for retired people. Fish farming is not for retired people, point of correction. Everyone should go into fish farm. It's lucrative. It's an adventure. It's something that you, once you start, you want to continue. So it's not for retired people. The youths, I encourage you to go into fish farming. You can pick a pond. You can build an Elton point behind your house and go into this adventure. So it is not for retired people. Okay. Yes. Okay, now, uh some people really feel um, and they, they, they see uh, fish farming as like uh, it's cumbersome, like it's, it's, it's difficult, you have to be there, you know, it's not like uh, maybe your uh, livestock now, okay, after feeding them, just go away. How is it, I'm sure you're also the, into other things, we are. how are you able to balance the both now? Okay, like what I said before, you train people. If you have capable hands, you don't need to. I'm not always yet uh, every day. I come all the way from the town. I come here sometimes three times in a week. If you have capable people, students that you have trained, they, they will be able to take care of your farm. So it is not like a daily, a daily thing because this fish are not, uh, it's not like buy and sell. It's not like a daily market. It has a season, a month, which you already know that at the end of this month, this is when I'm going to embark on my sales. So it's not like a daily something you must co come in and out. No. So uh, let me correct that impression. You can have a fish farm, a massive fish farm, and you will still be working in the office. So that is it. Okay, I started this fish farming as little as 200,000. I started from buying from someone that has a fish farm, smoked and sold it. I saw the difference, the profit margin. I decided that uh, if this person can rear and I buy, still make this profit, talk less of him. So that was why I, I went back to look at, okay, I want to go into this fish farming properly. And I started with 500. And within the range of uh, four months, I was able to make 20%. It was on and on. I had that challenge then. It's not like the space is not there. But I had that challenge because the capital was not there. Uh, it was, it's not like I, I will make more than that 20%. Because one thing in fish farming, the more you put, the more you make profits. That is the truth. If you have 10,000 fingerlings, you can also actually feed them with 100 bags. If you have 8,000 fingerlings, you can actually feed them with, with the same 800 uh, bags. So you see, it's something that the more you have the fish in the water, uh, the better for you. So I started as little as that. So I'm encouraging the youths. As small as 100,000, go to your backyard, buy a drum, start your fish farming. You can buy 100 pieces, rear them for six months. You see the margin, the profit margin, because it's lucrative. It is not something that you rear, you're looking for the market. No, the market is already there. As we speak, we have 9,000 outside the 18 pond. Every day they call us, we are ready. Just one person will take over all the 9,000 pieces, which is about two tons. So I encourage them, don't just, any little money you have, don't keep it. Go into fish farming. Take this adventure and you won't regret it. Okay. So basically, you know, businesses like yours now, and, um, 
in what way do you think government can actually come in to, to support? Is it in cash or kind? You know, because we believe government have given so many loans out there and then some grants, but then they have been channeled also. How is, do you think is a perfect way to be able to get these funds and how you to empower them? In what, in what way can, because we've been in it, so how do you think is the best way so yeah. that we can be able to feed ourselves? Okay. Oh, like uh, we here, we we have been writing to individuals actually, even proposing with a certain percentage up to take the twenty percent. But let's boost what we are doing here. Let people see that fish farming is lucrative, is something that Nigerians should go into. You understand? So, uh, the government coming in. Uh, we don't mind if they say okay they want to give us loan we are we are okay with that if it's grants we are also good with that so we take any any of of uh, 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 anyone they are bringing to our table cash going can because sometimes okay they end up giving you disciplines giving you the feed and all that or is it that you want money in your accounts to you make the, the decision uh, personally i would like them to get us the feed Yes, the feed. Uh, giving us the feed in 100% will pay me more. Because uh, at the end of the day, you can see I'm doing the fingerlings. I'm rearing. I'm breeding. So once I get my feed, I'm good to go. Okay. Yes. So now, uh, what's the major challenge now? Yeah, the poor government is watching and all that. You face now as a farmer. I'm sure you have challenges. Manpower. What, what could that be? Just high cost of feed. Only. Only we don't have problem in mind powers. They are always there. The market now. The market is hundred percent waiting for you to sell your products. Anytime. Anytime, any day. You can't be here and I'll call somebody. I have twenty thousand fishes, which are about four tons, uh, just four cars, which is about seven point something million. One person will take them up. So the market is there. The market all the way from Ibadan. We buy fish all the way from Ibadan. That is it. Uh, Abuja, as we speak, we don't have a no fish farm that will feed the whole uh, 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 Abuja. So you can see uh, Ibadan giving us fish, Akure bringing in fish to Abuja. So if we have um, in, you know, a lot of support from government, we can do it on our own here. So that is it. Okay. Uh, now, uh, have you tried any other species for catfish? Because, of course, I believe um, the only fish I've seen in Nigeria is rare, as you speak. Catfish, maybe it's not Yeah. Yes. So have you tried no, I have not. I just want to do the catfish because at the end of the day, I'm starting up with what I know that is very uh, lucrative and uh, uh, at every point in time I can sell off my products. So I'm doing only catfish for now. Okay. So now lastly, now, what are your last words to Nigerians, to governments, to individuals, to entities as to fish farming? Of course, you've seen, you've tested how it works. What's the, what's the I will uh, plead that you move into catfish business. It is lucrative. The market is there. The challenges are just your feeding. Apart from your feeding, you don't have any challenge. Um, the manpower is there. Uh, that is just it. So I advise the government to look into cat fishing business, into cash from the um, breeding stage, from the breeding stage to the selling point, which is the one kilo uh, point, especially the melange, which is the smoking size, because everybody in Nigeria eats smoked fish, either in your rice, your stew, your soup. So that is the melange size, which at the end of the day, for now, we get them from Medugri. Abuja also get their fish from Medugri because it's not enough. If you go to Kuba section, at every Monday, we have like eight boxes coming all the way from Medugri with smoke fish. They will sell that very Monday and go the next Monday they come in. Just that melange size. So I, I play with the, the government, individuals, entities, organizations to look into fish farming because it's very, very lucrative. And it will, it will lead to employment. When we have a massive uh, ground where we, have, we do this production in a massive uh, uh, way, we, a lot of people will be employed. A lot of youths will be taken out of the streets. They will be tutored. And at the end of the day, they have uh, something doing on their own. So that is it. Yes.
Many thanks for staying with us here on your first agriculture in the nation. And of course, we've been telling you how to hatch fish and raise them to smoke in love with a fish professional. Catfish usually takes an average of five months to reach table size. At this age, they usually have attained an average weight of one kg. The weight attained by catfish after five months is however variable depending on the number of factors that may include quality of fingerlings used, quality of feeds, water management quality, absence of disease, stocking density, among others. It is uncommon to have fish weight up to 1.5 kg after five months. Many thanks for staying with us here on your first agricultural TV station. My name is Joshua, your Aquaman on the program Aqua Farming. Bye for now.